everybody. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to do a little something different. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about uh, the security business that I do, also along with the firearm business. Um, I am a uh, armed registered guard in New York State. I do events, personal security. Uh, um, a lot of people ask me, what do you wear? Uh, what, what's your equipment? What's your setup? Um, things like that. So this video here is going to give you a brief description of what I wear, how I set my stuff up. So with that being said, let's get after it. Ain't this a bitch? I'm waiting on some action to jump off in here. You heard what Mr. Molly said? We top flight security of the world, Craig. Shit, not just the city, the world. Been jacked by Santa Claus, all kind of shit. They need security in the world, Craig. All right, here we go. So I'm going to go over a couple of things here on the table um, that I wear when I'm actually working my gigs. So obviously I said I was armed. Um, this is a Glock 21, so chambered in 45 mil. Just want to make sure it's clear. No rounds in there. I don't have a cameraman today. I am on autopilot, so if you see the, the gun pointing toward the camera, there's no one behind it, okay? The mag is empty, and again, there's nothing in the chamber. I have two mags in my belt. Nothing in those as well. I keep these in here to keep the the magazine kind of formed. I mean, the mag the magazine pouch kind of formed to the mag. All right, so um, here's my belt. We'll go over that first. Okay, all righty. So as you can see, I have both my mags here, and this host this mag holster is made by Dara Holsters. Pretty good company. They're not sponsoring anything. I'm just mentioning them just in case you want to check them out. All right, here's my uh, handcuff holder here, and I'll go over that in a minute. And my holster, and it is a locking holster. So, um, back to the handcuff. So this here, pretty neat. Easy, quick access. Push that down, and the handcuffs, they come right off. See? Very easy. And they go right, right back on as well. Pop it back up, and they lock in place. All right. So, a um, couple of things that I have here. Obviously, I have my handcuff keys. These are two different handcuff keys. This one here is a pen also, and this is just a straight handcuff key. I like to carry them both. Um, just in case you, this one is real small, probably, you know, really easy to lose. Then I have my flashlight. Of course, you have a flashlight. I also have a notepad. This here is very important. In case you have to take um, information down, because you're not going to be able to remember everything. So you can jot things down um, just the same way a police officer would do. I mean, you're working security. Why should your gear or anything like that be any different or your mindset or your training? Um, just know the laws in your state when it pertains to an armed guard. Okay, You can't go too far. Remember, you're not a police officer. But you can train and... Um, set your stuff up in a way that it's successful for you, okay? All right, um, another thing. I am wearing a vest. Um, you probably can tell now if I push it up, it's really con concealable. Um, I wear a vest because it's dangerous. <laughs> security, doing armed security is a dangerous job. Um, actually, any security is dangerous, but I wear this to put myself in the best position possible, okay? So I'm going to get up here, I'm going to put my, all my stuff on, and the way I put my stuff on may be different than the way you set your stuff up. Um, you know, you're, depending on your, your body type, if you have any type of disabilities or anything like that, you're going to set your stuff up um, differently than I am. So I'm going to set my stuff up just to show you guys a little bit of how I do it, okay? And I do wear a regular belt, that's just for the pants. But the gun belt is just that, just the gun belt. Okay, it's a quick release um, belt clip here. All right. I'll take the firearm, rock that for it, put the mag in, and the gun's in. Okay, that locks. Can't pull that out. I would have my belt a little bit tighter, but right now for demonstration purpose, I'm going to leave it a little loose so I can quickly get it off too. So, 
my pens I usually put here I don't put them on my belt some people put them on the belt but I like to put them in my pocket because I know the things in my pocket are non-lethal so I'm not making that mistake you know grabbing around here when I don't need to be grabbing around here because the situation the situation probably doesn't uh, warrant me touching my firearm okay my um, light same place put that here as well and what I didn't show you is I do have my pepper spray okay and that too I keep here down in this pocket this pocket has uh, velcro on it so I can just peel that over so it doesn't fall out if I have to get into something where I'm moving around a lot and the pepper spray gets you know from one of these pockets it can fall out because there's no excuse me there's no zipper and no velcro on it so I like to keep it right here plus I'm right handed and it just takes a little quick pull up and, and I got the pepper spray out okay All right. obviously again the mags are on this side and because I'm right handed of course my mags will be on the opposite side uh, the way I put my mags in the mag holder is if you can look, see here I'm always putting it where the bullet faces forward that way when I have to reload if I have to reload I'm coming out and I'm going right up into the um, pistol well okay, I can demonstrate that here in a second so what I'm saying is when the again we are unloaded and no mag in the mag well in the magazine I mean no round in the magazine I'm sorry so yeah when I come out if I have to reload again my finger is always touching the front and there will be a bullet there obviously if it was loaded so I know the tip of that bullet is representing which way the mag should go into the uh, the firearm and which it would be this here it will go immediately this way and it's in I will rock it forward and I will reload it okay all right so that's just how I set my stuff up and that's just how I um, have my things you know positioned on me as well as the things I carry um, the notebook I'm sorry the notebook usually goes in the same pocket as the uh, pepper spray on my right side again because I am right-handed um, also have a watch on you have to have I, I think you need to have a watch on. I mean you can have your phone but you know phones get lost and things like that but the watch is strapped to the body it's not going anywhere Unless you have a phone case that you want to wear on you, but I would suggest you wear it in a place where it does not interfere with any of your things you have to get to if there is an emergency. Um, obviously, your firearm, your your uh, your pepper spray, or your or reloading your magazines. I would keep it um, if that if that stuff is on your belt. Um, you know, I would keep a, a good a pocket for this to go in in case you get into something where that where this doesn't interfere with your uh, non-lethal items or even your lethal items um, and that's what I um, always try to keep in mind that I want to keep the non-lethal things away from the lethal things also you have to train um, you have to train to uh, know and how to use your know where your stuff is and how to use it um, I hear a lot of people that say well you know, my, my job doesn't uh, pay me to go to the range or my job doesn't pay me to take um, pepper spray classes or, or handcuff courses. But honestly, what you carry, you should know how to use. You should be trained on what to use. You shouldn't be carrying these items if you do not know how to use them. Um, yes, uh, a lot of jobs these days or a lot of um, details, they don't pay for um, these things um, they just they, either they can't afford it or they just don't but that does not stop you from going out and um, getting the training that you need for yourself because at the end of the day it's you protecting yourself and you may be protecting others but the bottom line is you have to protect yourself and be trained um, on each item that you carry if you're not trained on it I mean what, what good is it what good is it how are you going to use it under stress when that 
when a stressful situation comes about and you're shaking and you don't have a clue and someone's fighting you and you're trying to get cuffs on them and you've never done this before because you never trained with them. Um, I mean, yes, it, it, training is expensive, but it's also required. It's also necessary. I mean, if you have a, a car and that car, the motor goes, yes, that's expensive to get fixed, but it's, but you have to. I mean, you can't just say, I'm not going to fix it. Or you can say, I can get another car. Well, same with, with training. You can, you, you, it's hard to elect to say, I'm not going to train. I'll just be able to do it when it comes about. No, it doesn't, it really doesn't work that way. Um, you may get lucky. You may be able to get cuffs on, but where do you have to use pepper spray? Where do you have to use your firearm? You're not trained to do that. Um, All right. Some, um, other things to consider when, um, Obviously, you're setting your gear up and getting ready to go out on one of, uh, one of your details or whatever it may be. Um, the environment you're working, um, where you obviously, well, the environment you're working. What is what is the task? What are you expected to do? Um, and the weather. These these things matter when you're uh, setting your gear because you may have to put gloves on your belt. Um, if you're working where they don't want such an aggressive look, you may have to carry concealed. You can still uh, have a belt, but you may need to wear a overgarment to hide all, hide all your uh, equipment. And when hiding your equipment, you also have to be trained to know how to draw from concealment. Um, I think this is something that a lot of people don't even think about. They just think, well, maybe if something happens, I can get to the gun real quick. I can get to the pepper spray real quick. Um, they, that may not be the case all the time. Um, what if your garment gets in the way? What if you just freak out and just have a, 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 a brain spasm where you just can't figure things out because everything's happening at once and I get this garment over you. You're trying to get to things and you can't do that. Uh, you need to practice. You need to train um, with the gar with an over garment on at the range or in the house, just practicing and uh, dry firing, or just practice getting to your pepper spray, getting to the handcuffs. Again, I said my handcuffs are set up, you know, behind me, um, right at my lower back on my belt. But I have practiced with reaching back, popping that button, and they fall right into my hand. Um, I didn't just throw them on there and hope that when I get in a situation, it works. This is not how. You should operate. This is not how you should expect things to go every time. I mean, you shouldn't expect things are going to go smooth every time you get into a situation, especially if you have not trained uh, with your equipment. Um, you know, just just things to think about. Even even working with uh, other people, um, are you just an add-on to a security detail, or have you worked with these people for some time and you? kind of know their uh, strengths and their weaknesses. Um, I have done details where I have came on and everybody's strange to me. Um, but I'll ask questions. Hey, you know, hey, how you doing? How, how long have you been doing this? Did you get a general idea? Um, just things like that. When you when you get on ground to these places or whatever it may be, do a walk around. Walk through the venue. Know the, know the exits. Know where the bathrooms are. Know... All, know where all these things are because if something happens, all this is going to matter. Um, know what the uh, client is expecting from you and not expecting from you. Know, know your lane. Um, if you're working at a Rite Aid or Walgreens and coming policy is you do not chase people out the door. Don't chase people out the door. It's, it's not your merchandise and they have given you specific instructions not to do so. Um, just just know your your environment and, and 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 what you're working with and things things should go a lot smoother for you. But the uh, training, especially of your arm with a firearm, should be uh, at the top of your list of things to do. Um, it's a gun. Okay. It's a dangerous weapon you need to be trained on it and you need to consistently train on it. You know, I, I have guys that tell me, oh, well, we qualify once a year and that's all the state requires. That means absolutely nothing. I, it doesn't. It means 
absolutely nothing. Because if you if you're, if you're focused on this qualifying once a year, that's telling me you probably don't train throughout the year either. You know, um, I get it. Ammo is expensive, but if this is the profession you're in, this is what comes with that profession. You buy ammo, you spend the money on range time, and you putting rounds down range. There's no other way that <laughs> that I can I can put it to you. Um, again. Even training with pepper spray and, and handcuffs, you should be also doing this. Um, and keep it up, like I said before earlier, keep it with the laws in your state. What can I do? What can't I do? What what can I carry? What can I not carry? I know here in New York State, we have a lot of restrictions on what we can carry and what we cannot carry as um, security officers. And obviously, everyone knows as private citizens, which you're still a, a private citizen a security officer. But I'm just saying, know your laws on what you can be doing out here. Um, don't just make the, uh, try to make the case that because New York State said, you know, I, I you shot 250 rounds at uh, a target from three different um, distances or four different distances that, that you're good to go. Train, um Train in, in, with scenarios. Go to the range. Uh, set up a no shoot shoot situation. I know most indoor ranges you can't do that, but join a gun club that has an outdoor range. Set up targets for a no shoot shoot situation. Um, learn how to move and shoot. Uh, learn how to move or not move in a crowded situation. You know, learn how to identify, uh, you know, potential threats or whatever it may be. It's not just you know, get up, throw that gun on, go to a bar if you're working at a bar, or go to a, a Rite Aid if you're working at a Rite Aid and do security. That's just not it. And then you don't do nothing in between um, the time you have to work. And, and you know, in the meantime, in time you have to work, in time you don't work. You should be training. If you have a regular job, I get it. But at some point, um, within 30 days, you should be putting rounds down on I mean, this is, this is, it's serious. You don't want to um, get yourself in a situation where you have to go to court and that, and that lawyer or that judge is asking you, you know, how, how much training have you had? When's the last time you trained? When's the last time you fired your weapon other than the situation that just happened that you're in now? You don't want to be sitting up there and throwing the judge a whole bunch of goose eggs because you haven't done anything. So, um, again, I just wanted to bring this up because a lot of people ask me, you know, what do I do? How do, you know, do I train a lot? And what's, what equipment do I wear? And how do I set my equipment up and all this stuff? And, you know, it, it, it's good questions. It's definitely a question. I don't mind talking about it, but none of the stuff that I have here that I wear matters unless I train with it. So that's about all I have on that. Um, I'm going to be doing a video on, um, how I set my range belts up. So when I go to the range, how do I set my belt up for training? Cause I have to train too. And I'm usually training with another instructor. So people want to know how do they set their things up to go get um, formal training. I'm going to go over that and um, what to expect when you get to the range, if you're training with a, um, um, you know, a professional uh, instructor. So, um, I think that's it for me today, and we will see you later, and remember, you are your first responder.